everyone and welcome back. If you have a Moss and the Gantt rifle, you're probably noticing that there, there's a little bit of flop here in the trigger. It's kind of annoying. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install a re trigger return spring so that it's nice and tight like this. All right, first what you're going to do is remove the stock from the rifle. So you basically have to disassemble your rifle to a certain degree. First thing is to take the bolt out. And you're going to do that by opening it up and then pulling the trigger, holding it to the rear, and then the bolt will come sliding out. And then we're going to have, in my particular case, I'm using the M44 version, which has a folding bayonet. So I'm going to have to take out the cleaning rod if you have one of those. And that should go for any of them. So we'll take the cleaning rod out. I'm going to have to t open up the bayonet here to get that out of the way because we're going to have to take off these two straps here that hold on the handguard. <clears throat> this is kind of the roughest spot um, aside from actually putting the spring in the gun. So we're going to depress this right here and while depressing that we're going to slide that ring off and we're going to do both of those in that respect. Yours, depending on your rifle, it could be kind of tight so I'm going to use my screwdriver here and I'm going to press that as much as I can and then try to wiggle that ring down a little bit, that little strap. And like I said, it is kind of tough depending on your rifle, how tight the wood is and whatnot. So there we go. I've got it started. You can see how I got it over the little hump there. So I'm going to slide that down to here. And I'm going to do the same to this one over here. And this one's really tight. All right. So I've got that one off. We'll slide those down to the end of the barrel. Press it to get that back one over. And then the handguard comes off here. So we'll set that off to the side. So now our rings are off. Now we're ready to take the stock off. And we're going to do that with two simple screws. One right here in front of the magazine. And when you're using a screwdriver for this, try to get the biggest screwdriver you can. Uh, that fits the slotted slotted heads of the screwdriver that way you're not marring the surface of the screws or stripping them out and then we'll get the one in the back right here behind the bolt or behind the receiver however you want to call it all right so here's our rear screw which is longer than the front so let me shake that out that bayonet is really giving me problems once you get those two screws loose, then you can pull the whole trigger assembly and magazine out. Looks like I need a couple more threads here on the front one. Yep, yeah, there it goes. So short screw in the front, long screw in the back. Trigger assembly or um, trigger guard and magazine comes right out. And now our barrel should come straight out from the stock. Our receiver and everything. So we're going to put that stock off to the side. We don't need that either. And at this point for me, for space constraints, I'm going to fold my bayonet back down. I wish there was a way, a simple way to take that off because that's just kind of in the way. All right. So this is the area we're going to focus on now. Here's the trigger. We got that slop. And this spring we're going to install is just a real tiny little spring and we're going to we're going to add that into here. It's going to take up the slack right here. It shouldn't affect your trigger job at all. Your your trigger pull. Uh, the the pin right here that holds the trigger in place, it might fall out depending on your rifle. Mine's very loose. And in my case, mine is I guess peened on one end, so it goes in one direction and it comes out one direction. So if you pull the pin out and try to turn the pin around and stick it back in, it's not going to fit. So it's kind of like a one way in, one way out. We're going to take this screw out right here. If yours is super, super tight, you may want to apply a little heat to it. So we're going to take that off. Let me turn it to the side so you can see. So we'll undo our screw here. And once we do that, get some tweezers. And I'm going to poke out that pin. See, it doesn't go that way. So there we go. So mine comes straight out like so. Once you get that out, then you can pull the trigger and these parts are right here. Out. So this is all you need to do at this point. Like I said, the most difficult part is actually 
putting that spring into place. And uh, I'll show you how I can, how I'm going to do it, and then hopefully someone out there can point me in a better direction, going, "Hey, man, you got to do it this way." Anyways, at this point, I mean, if you haven't cleaned your rifle, this is a good, good spot to do it. We're going to take our trigger, and the, the, we're going to take these two parts right here. And there's a spring washer in the kit, like so. We're going to put that right here. It's going to go where this screw came out. So we put those back in there together. And it's a fairly tight fit between that washer and that hole. So getting that screw started can be kind of a pain. So just, you know, be patient. Don't cross thread anything. And where did my screw go that stuck to a magnet? So now we'll take our little screw that we took out earlier and we'll try to get that sucker started. All right. So now we've got our washer in place. Go ahead and snug this down. All right, so here we're ready to install the trigger return spring. We need to take our little pin here that the trigger pivots on and we need to push that through. We're gonna get it started into the trigger itself. So I've got the pin in this all the way and then only through half of the trigger here. That opens up or frees open the space here because that's where our spring's gonna go. So I'm going to take our trigger return spring and there's some fishing line that's going to come in the kit and I'm going to take it and I'm going to snake the line through the eye of the spring here and then I'm going to grab both ends and pull it so the spring sits in the middle like so. So now I'm going to take that and fish or snake the two ends of the fishing line through the trigger like so and I'm going to catch those on the other side so that we're pulling it through like so. We're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to pull the spring all the way through. So grabbing both lines, we're going to get that by pulling it through, it'll compress the spring. So this is the position we're trying to pull it through in. My fingers might get in the way of this, but so now I'm going to pull on that fishing line. It's going to compress that spring. And when you get it about halfway through, you can then come over and press the pin through and it's going to go through the spring. So now we've pulled the spring through, I've got my pin through the spring and now we can pull the fishing line out of the way and throw that away. So there's the install on the Moss and the Gant trigger return spring and now what it does is it gives a little bit rearward uh, pressure now, a little bit of tension there to take up that slack so you don't get all floppy anymore. Anyways, thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the video.